How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf and uh, today I'm going to go and do the uh, the mission called Fallen Bridge because it's to fix a bridge on uh, the Yellow Brick Road map and it just kind of makes things... I've got quite a few big missions coming up where you've got to do a lot of like long planks, medium planks and all that and I just think it'll be easier to have another route into like that map without having to just keep relying on going the same way every time. Um, yeah, for this one it just ended up being a good excuse uh, for at least this part of the mission to take the uh, collab out. I've been wanting to bring this one out and I've put an 8 slot trailer on it and there's one lot of uh, metal beams I can get at the actual uh, yard like where the garage where I'm starting and then yeah kind of cut across the map thankfully I've still got one uh, kind of metal frame building left that's halfway across the river so I can grab that as well and uh, yeah as you can see in the top corner I need three lots of metal beams and then three lots of uh, concrete slabs which I believe there was some concrete slabs for, it might have been the gateway mission, but the chances are if you've got to this mission, you don't have any concrete slabs left on the map, and if you do, you're going to end up using them up, and then you'll need to kind of do what I'm doing now, I assume, for probably the uh, the gateway. Um, yeah, you need to go and get some cement. In fact, there's a couple of steps you need to do. I The bit of footage missing, missing from this mission tonight is... I got a dolphin and a loaf of course and uh, took a generator over to later on in this video uh, I'm gonna uh, take like the cement to the same factory and switch it over so I'm essentially gonna do the same journey so just to save this uh, video being more like 50 odd minutes long um, yeah I've left that bit out but there's a ga uh, there's uh, sorry like a warehouse thing on uh, the yellow brick road map there's two warehouses you have to take a generator to both of them one of them you can build uh, concrete slabs and concrete blocks and you can build that with cement I believe well it's definitely two lots of cement to build one concrete slab I can't remember the concrete blocks to be honest and then there's another one as well that's um it says metal rolls and metal beams I've not actually been there yet but I believe you can swap metal beams for metal rolls and vice versa but yeah, the uh, the concrete one, you sort of build concrete slabs and blocks just with cement. Um, yeah, cutting across here, I've kind of decided to go this way. Instead of cutting through the uh, like the trees to cut through the sawmill, because I've got the 8-slot trail with me, I'm trying to avoid kind of like there's that awkward hill. Um, I did do on the live stream, like with the mods, I did the bridge layer mod and put a bridge over the broken bridge that's like out the back of the uh, the sort of yard or whatever garage that we uh, we start on. Uh, but yeah, this is my normal playthrough, so I've not got that one. But to be fair, I, I'm, I like this route. I prefer this route, like this part of it anyway. Once we're now getting to the water, it's uh, back to the kind of old <laughs> old game mechanics that slow down a bit. And this, uh, yeah, collab is feeling pretty good in the sense I am still pulling a uh, ain't sort of trailer and all the rest of it. It's nice that it's got the liftable suspension. I still don't really know which tyres to ever go with with this collab. I've gone for the ones that, when it says the ratings of them, I think the bottom two are excellent and excellent. But I don't know. I kind of, I tend to go for the tyres that look more traditionally like big fat knobbly mud tyres, but I tried these ones today. I don't really know if it makes a hell of a lot of difference. It was more, again, just I'm pretty convinced these days that it's this map and there's like specific coding on that's just layered on top of like what the vehicles can and can't do anyway because yeah when I drive vehicles on other maps preferably like the earlier the better the base maps is like best case scenario they just feel like they're more balanced and all the rest of it this map just for whatever reason seems to zap it just like zap the power I suppose it's almost a bit like if you were in like a really high altitude area where it's like maybe less oxygen and it's draining it and whatever but um yeah I don't believe Maine is particularly high altitude I could be wrong but from all the uh the kind of water standing water sitting around on this map oh yeah yeah I'm not so sure but yeah this is the thing like when you're going along now I'm stuck in first gear and I can't remember if I keep clicking L1 like crazy it's kind of something I tend to do as force habit. Yeah, there I go. <laughs> I might have actually let me jump up to second there. It's just there's certain places where it literally just locks you in first place and it feels like, yeah, the game's just purposely doing it. It's not letting me drop the hammer and be free. The collab really, it was feeling pretty good up to now. <laughs> That's what she said. And uh, after I grab these metal uh, beams, but 
the way I cut over the first half of the river was kind of I avoided the road that's drawn on the map through the river and then when, once I collected the metal beams I kind of met back up with the road so I can't 100% say if it was the two more metal beams I grabbed that added enough weight to the trailer to sort of slow me down or if I'm connected back to the road I'm kind of inclined to say it was the road though just because yeah generally speaking you can see now as well, here's a perfect example, it's not a particularly thick muddy road or anything but I was stuck in first gear, again it might have eventually let me get into second but yeah, it just really wasn't uh, there, it wasn't happening a lot. And like I said, for doing this mission by the way, the way I'm going now, I'm going to use the, what's it called, the North East Gateway? Um, yeah, if I didn't, I'd have to obviously go the normal way and just, I don't know, with the 8 slot trailer, the way I cut up through the map would be a bit awkward. Going along the main road's a bit of a pain in the ass. Plus, later on, I'm kind of going to have to go along the main road to go to these warehouses, so if I had to go that way now, it just kind of, I'd have to double back on myself quite a bit. I'd almost be tempted if I had to go the other way, if I didn't have the gateway open, possibly be tempted to do like a road train and take the cement as well at the same time. Because where I just popped out back onto the road, if I went straight over, that's where I've got to go and get the cement from later. I think these bits still slow down quite a lot. And uh, yeah, I was looking through the missions as well. I think one of the missions I'm going to get done pretty soon is the... Is it Southwest, I assume it'll be then? The, uh, the Southwest Tunnel. Because... There's a few missions, again, the bigger missions were like delivering lots of wood. Um, there's a spot I've got to drop some wood off that's kind of in that bottom corner and from the looks of it, it's either going to be a gigantic pain in the ass hole in the wood across all like some pretty thick, deep snow and all the rest of it or, yeah, just get that gateway sorted. And thankfully, I believe the materials for that gateway, because of the way I've done this, I didn't rob any of the metal beams so there's a warehouse kind of in the middle of the uh, yellow brick road map that's got uh, what is it? Uh, uh, four concrete blocks and four metal beams. So, uh, yeah, got to take that over to the gateway, but at least then it just saves all the hassle when, when I'm doing the uh, the bigger, fatter missions. Which, from the looks of it, I've gone through them, they're pretty likely going to be have to be like two-part videos or something, because I just can't see me uh, fitting it all in. <laughs> That's, of course, what she said. Yeah, this gateway is pretty handy, to be honest. Or certainly for doing this Fallen Bridge mission, anyway. I remember somebody said a while ago, uh, it's pretty handy having this gateway unlocked if you do the Fallen Bridge mission, and yeah. Like now, by the way, I didn't necessarily need an 8-slot trailer. I could have got a vehicle that had a sideboard and then, say, do a ramped flatbed. But from the route I was taking, I kind of knew once I got to, like, join back on the road out of the uh, river, the 8-slot shouldn't be too much of a pain in the ass. One nice thing with the Colob, particularly now you can raise the suspension as well, it sits quite nice and high, so those trailer legs don't get in the way too much. I watched the film the other night, uh, Fargo, and uh, it had like that exact same big X-Man thing standing there. I was just wondering if that was like a reference to it. Never really occurred to me, but yeah. That film as well, it was alright. I'd heard it was like a a great film. It definitely wasn't bad, certainly worth a watch, but I wouldn't say it was like all-time knocked it out of the park classic. I believe it was based on a true story though, which if that's the case that makes it a bit better. It always helps when films are based on true stories. But yeah, yeah. We need to make more stuff like that. Especially I remember, uh, I can't think what the film was, but I remember reading about it. They made some film that was based on a guy, it was uh, I think something to do with the war, and it was based on his life story and they had to remove bits because it made the film seem unbelievable even though it was this guy's like real life story so they kind of actually watered it down just to make it into a film and it's like they should have left it all in especially if you know it's a true story it's like who cares how unbelievable it seems that's generally the point of it oh yeah by the way right now <laughs> my cat jumped up and his fat bushy tail managed to uh, sit right in the way of my screen for about the next 10 or 15 seconds. So I was driving a little bit sketchy, swerving at the last minute, all sorts, and then I think he sort of moved about now. So that's my excuse, <laughs> and I'm sticking to it.
yeah, this bridge is a, a bit of a... Oh, not a pain in the ass, but it's, it certainly would have been handy to have this road open earlier. But like I said, it's one of those with this phase. It's kind of which mission do you pick first, because they're all kind of handy to have done. And this isn't really part of the mission in the end, but there's the bridge you'll see in a sec. Like, this is the water that I tried cutting over a few weeks ago in the Tatarin, but that drowned. The club, however, is tall enough to get over there, and I also knew I could have uh, zombie-winched it with the loaf. If not, but for some reason, because I'm an idiot, I forgot that I even, uh, I need six lots of cement. to. I thought, oh, if I can get across this water, this will make this mission so much shorter, because I'm only down the road from the uh, the factory that I need to get the, swap the cement or whatever. I haven't got the cement, and you can see there's a goddamn horse or a vehicle. I was about to tip, loaf jumped off, saved everyone else, sacrificed himself. Had his little, I don't know, Jack from Titanic moment. And uh, yeah. The club didn't tip. It's just a, one of many reasons to get yourself a loaf. So the next mission is, or next part of it, is uh, getting the cement. And for this one, uh, is this the Tate? Yeah, this is the new, the new Tager. Tony, the Tager, is what I believe I've called it. I had a little drive out. I think I've left a little bit in of the uh, the old Tager. That's still, still doing pretty well. Still going pretty strong, especially again for this map where everything feels like it's took a little bit of a, uh, a power nerf going on. Definitely worth it along here, just avoid snow at all cost. This truck, I have to say, was uh, it's going pretty nicely, maybe especially after driving the club, which was nice to drive because it's a slower gearbox. But, um, I don't know, I drove a few other things and I, like I said, I took the uh, generator and stuff. And yeah, I have to say, this take I do like it. I'm sort of, this has been thrown in with just one of the vehicles that I quite happily drive. Kind of the Dolphin, the Tager, the Voron Grad. Uh, the Voron the AE is good. It's just the steering I don't like. That's the only thing why I pretty much never drive it. But I would. If I had to, as a solid vehicle, I would happily uh, take it. Yeah, this, I'd say, is um, kind of in with all them lot now. Obviously, got the bigger, like, I do like stuff like the Colob and that, but I don't really group it with sort of all these vehicles that are this size, sort of the medium trucks that can zip around. They're kind of the best of both worlds really, as much as I do enjoy the massive vehicles in this game. Trucks like this have got enough, they've got the better speed because they've got the better gearbox, or at least I think anyway, opinion wise, I'm not saying that's absolute fact, but for me, the speed wise, they've got the better gearbox. The smaller you can fit through like the trees and all stuff like that easier. Um, yeah, you don't really gain a hell of a lot for, say, driving something like the P16, as fun as it is. And the club and all that, it's a you kind of pay a price for driving the massive stuff. See, again, I cut across, like, the river section, it's ticking along fine, I get to this point, and it's just that artificial slowness feels like it's kicked in again, so I'm, as near as makes no difference, convinced that it is the uh, like this road section, it wasn't like the club earlier and that, having the two extra metal beams. And again, it's not the end of the world, it's not like it pisses me off, it's just one of them where you squeeze the throttle and kind of just wait. It's, not, it's just not really that exciting. And for this, at this point as well, I was not too keen about it. But I'd, uh, I'd set off without a loaf. To be honest, I kind of forgot when I shot off. I forgot to grab a loaf and get like draw a line of where I'm going. I've essentially just gone the same way I did with the club. The club, I just went along that road though. Uh, now I'm obviously cutting off to go and get the uh, cement. Nearly got through all of that in high gear. gets a bit weird with the power here as well, especially that snow, but that snow is like complete death snow. It stops everything. And this little river section looks pretty cool. It's bloody slow again. <laughs> I wish there was uh, other news. And again, though, I tried it on the live stream, uh, putting a... Uh, what's it, like the bridge? Seemed to have gone completely blank. Uh, the bridge layer, that's it. 
Uh, it didn't fit going across there. It was like, there's just... It needs probably another... If it was 10% longer, then it probably would. But I bet you could still put a bridge layer thing here, where I am now. And even though it just sit on the floor, you'd cut out like this section where I'm on right now. Yeah, there's a few different things. I need to uh, kind of play around with that bridge section there. If you've got the patience and all the rest of it, I believe you could stack trailers or cargo and all sorts in between that bridge. And then, yeah, use the bridge laying mod to kind of fill the gaps in and do the rest. But, to be honest, if it was a more important bridge, it'd be uh, probably pretty cool to sit there and do. But, to be fair, I don't think there's going to be a hell of a lot left that I need to grab from this warehouse. After I've got this cement, anyway. From what it looks like, for most of the rest of the missions, I'm going to be uh, delivering wood. <laughs> Living the dream. And uh, yeah, they seem like pretty bloody massive missions as well. What is that? Oh, the old uh, Voron Grad. Well, yeah, again, another solid vehicle. And this muddy section. I end up cutting like a a bit of a chunk out of here. I like to leave the footage in, obviously, as and where I can. That's kind of the point of making the video. But when it gets too slow, it was creeping through. At this speed, I would have been kind of happy. But it gets to about now, which is when I cut it, and it just... I was flinging winches out for a little bit. You can see a couple of the trees are missing to the uh, well, left of me now. And eventually, funnily enough, normally, steering like left and right seems to help. But in this situation, just one of those rare times, it was like every time I let go of the steering, I kind of got a little boost forward, and every time I steered left or right, I was, as near as makes no difference, kind of just sat on the spot. And uh, yeah, like I say, yeah, letting go of the steering seemed to help more than it hindered me there. Which is rare, normally it is the opposite way, I can't remember, that's what stood out and I kind of noticed it. Uh, grabbed a bit of fuel from my strategic trailer. It was pretty wishful thinking trying to jump up into high man. Still trying to get it into high. It's a little bit again, it's this road section along here. Once we actually get onto normal roads, getting into high gear is a little bit a little bit more simple. To be fair, it's quite a, like, I was going to say decent load, that's bound to be followed by that's what she said. Like, the cement and the trailer and all that, it's about as much as you can pack this vehicle. I even believe I've got the crane on it as well, so it's kind of maximum weight. Um, yeah, this is the old Taker. Just kind of, basically, I came to the conclusion that I wasn't happy that I didn't have a loaf with me, because I was having, like, loaf withdrawals, and, yeah, so, special delivery. Stuck one in a Taker, sent him on his way. Um, and then I decided to just to bring another maintenance trailer for no particular reason, just kind of going to sit it on the side of the road just to be there, kind of nearish to the uh, yellow brick road entrance, so I'll use it at some point. It's bound to uh, bound to have its uses. I was just the reason I left this footage in. I was going to cut it out, but as you can see, the uh, the old Tager powering along like a good one. And again, a lot of trucks have gone through like that river section with the high gear, but just plain, as you can see, it's got a loaf in there. It's got the maintenance trailer that's flopping around like mad, but it didn't really stop me or anything. And yeah, even all up here, it's uh, sticking in high gear, so just still pretty nice, punchy vehicle to use. And then, yeah, um, pulled over, send this thing back. And then once I reconnect like this truck with where I've just pulled that uh, old Tager up to, that's essentially like the same journey I did with the generator, like it's the same journey I did with this vehicle, so just to save, yeah, like I say, another 10 minutes of footage. This river section is just way too over the top. I cut out, I believe over two minutes in the end, but you can see it's so slow it's like just insane. Again, not difficult or anything, just 
squeeze the throttle, twiddle my thumbs, sit around, look out the window, stare at the wall. Just, yeah, <laughs> a bit of this, bit of that. Wait for the inevitable to happen. Same thing there, pretty much. At least that's not as bad. That's like just a little patch, so. It doesn't seem to matter with that first bit, whether, which way you're going, even though the current's kind of quite violently against you the way I was just going. It doesn't really seem to help that much if you're going the other way. Not top speed-wise, anyway. I'd certainly say you'd probably be less likely to get stuck going the other way with the current kind of going with you, but... Yeah, it just seems to be like some absolute speed cap that it just will not let you uh, get above. I was quite happy this thing got into high gear going up this hill. Which it gets a little bit steeper now, but yeah, like a lot of vehicles, or not a lot actually, which one is it? I'm sure it's one of the... the Zix 605R really doesn't like going up that hill. I remember that's one of them. They struggle in first, let alone in high gear. I just quickly edited this. Um, I was grabbing me loaf, but then I drove him on to... I kind of messed it up though. It's a pretty terrible effort. I've got a better example later, but I just left the footage in because, yeah. If any, uh, need to get yourself a loaf. That's one way to get him up on the cargo. Well, you just drive him up. He's an off-road professional. What I was going to do was park him kind of half on the back of the trailer and half on the ramps, and it still lets you pack the loaf. And, um, well, yeah, there you go. That's another little tip, I suppose, for anyone that does use this ramp flatbed. If you do fold the ramps down, there is enough room to pack a vehicle. I mean, again, I'm, uh, I'm not biased at all, but I would suggest a loaf. He does fit. He's not hogging too much room. Good luck getting like a Tatrin on there or something. Uh, and then yeah, finally, a yellow brick road map, whatever. Oh, there is the name. Uh, yellow Rock National Forest. Not going to remember that for shit. Yellow brick road. Um, yeah, kind of go along the main road to the top, go to the f uh, factory warehouse thing that I've uh, already delivered the generator to. And I came this way to deliver the generator, so like I said, it's the exact same journey. It's pretty... I don't know, the generator's a little bit like that maintenance trailer, sort of flops around, it's not particularly heavy and it's just one of them. It was alright, they took it, like I so, said, with the Dolphin and Loaf, uh, it was a pretty good drive, pretty uh, non-eventful. Just noticed that barrier on the right at the last second, I was uh, seriously close to smashing my entire suspension there, again, I mean... It's just one of many reasons to get his over loaf. He would have fixed me up and kept me going. See, one crash like that, you damage like either your tyres, your suspension, or your fuel tank. That's it. Gonna have to get something from the garage or whatever. But got a got a goddamn horse for me. It's no longer a worry. Yeah, this bit there, it ploughed through that mud back there, pretty pretty convincingly, which is good considering all the cargo and the fact that I've got the ramp flatbed, which is yeah, as we've discovered, like driving a land anger. Do you know what this trailer is like? You know tractor pulling? <laughs> that is exactly what this trailer is like. It's just... I'm sure it's built to dig into the ground. Even going along here... I believe I had to get it out of high in the end of that now, but it got most of the way across, considering it was a bit of a rough entry. When you sort of bounce around like that, it doesn't really help for maintaining the speed, but yeah. I have to say, they've, uh, they've been pretty fair with this vehicle. Trying to get it into, was it, yeah, 8 out of 8. Oh no, not yet. This bit, by the way, out of all the uh, icy section, or is it, oh no, sorry, it's not this bit. This bit's actually, yeah, sorry, this bit's pretty good, you can see. I personally would recommend doing what I'm doing right now, cutting along the edge, because where it goes from ice to water, they always build, like, just a hard, icy edge. So you can't really smash the two apart if you know what I mean it's kind of like it's just going to be permanently solid where I drove over you can see chunks of ice breaking and all the rest of it but you don't really actually sink through the floor so your tyres are actually still touching something that can uh, get some grip if not I think I'd have to uh, jump the little loaf off the trailer send him up ahead And yeah, that whole icy section, considering it's a pretty long section as well, so it's kind of one of them, if you get stuck, there's no... Or if you've got a vehicle that's terrible with ice, there's no... Well, I'll just wing it for a truck length. And uh, yeah, this did pretty well through there. 
you can see that all the ground clearance and everything on this vehicle is pretty good. The biggest thing that sort of bites it, but it doesn't really matter too much in the ice, is it's got quite a long wheelbase, like the gap between the front uh, wheels and the sort of rear axles. So you can kind of beach it a bit, but yeah, it doesn't really matter with the ice, whether you've got a narrow wheelbase or whatever. And once all your wheels punch through, you kind of auto beached. Yeah, is it now? I was trying to get it like it wasn't too happy about going up into. Six, seven. I don't know if I ever got it into 8th. At one point it kept going from 4th to 5th, I'm really not sure why. Yeah, this icy section. I might try going down the left hand side next time. Because this, uh, has not been going too well for me. I got through here in the Dolphin and Loaf earlier, but out of anyone I was bringing the generator. This was the section that was the most awkward. Thankfully, at least they have put one or two trees at the side there that are, like, immovable. But I had this big chunk of ice there. Normally the ice can move as well as honking my horn. But it was kind of, like, solid in place. Long story short, I edited a minute or two out there. Don't know what changed, but for whatever reason I kind of moved away, went near it again. And the ice started moving. So, you, as you can see there, I could just honk my horn and get the bloody thing out of the way. It was stuck that solidly. I clipped it with my wheel and it nearly flipped my entire truck and trailer. Yeah, it's just this section, like, getting from where I am to this little bit, where there's, like, a... Yeah, you can just see solid ice running, like, along the length of it. Getting to that section was a, a pain in the ass both times. As of yet, I haven't slipped off into the water. I don't know what I'd do, but I wouldn't surprise me if they uh, <laughs> a quit and reload would be in order if I was doing that. To be fair, I did bring a crane with this truck, just in the event if I did tip, I wouldn't automatically go to the old uh, quit and reload method. The only time when I start abusing quit and reload is after the game's already trolled me and took the piss for an hour or two, and then I'm just now getting my time back, or at least damage limitation. If I tip and have to quit and reload, I know it's going to cost me two or three minutes max. Whereas this game, who knows? With the cranes being weaker than ever before and the winches being weaker and so on, uh, something that could take a minute or two could end up taking an hour or two. So if I just quit and reload, I know it's a few minutes and I'm done. But if the game hasn't trolled me, I like to try and do do things sensibly and properly if I can. Anyway, got out of uh, that crap, yeah, quickly changed the uh, time back today. Like, you can see the yellow square of the garage where I'm heading to. Old warehouse, factory, whatever the bloody hell they call it. And apart from the ice patches along the main road, again, in theory, you probably could use the bridge layer mods, just stack them kind of end to end and cover the ice that way. It's just, I don't know in the long run if it'd be worth it if you maybe did it as soon as you got onto the maps but by now yeah I'm kind of probably two-thirds of the way through the missions I've not got a hell of a lot left to do really so it's, uh, it's probably all a bit a bit of faffing around for not a lot of gain for me anymore I was going to say, this section can be a little bit trollish sometimes. Thankfully, there is that telegraph pole sort of slap bang in the middle. So, as long as you can reach that, you're going to get at least halfway. And then there's like a little bit of section you sort of need to do by yourself. But if you can, then there's a, a tree on the other side of the kind of where you can see that brown bush sort of to the left of the road. There's a tree around there, but you can't quite reach it like from this telegraph pole. Oh, it might, that might be a uh, killable tree, but I oh, know it's not quite good, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's what I have to do. Stick a winch on the back of the uh, trailer to the telegraph pole, just so it kind of pulls it that way. It's going to force my truck forward. I'm literally centimeters off the uh, the tree I need. That's probably yeah, that one. 
I've also been hooked on the ice pretty good. I'm going to blame it on the, uh, the ramped flatbed, just the way the rear axles on that trailer work, but I must have been hooked in there pretty good, because even when I started uh, pulling on the winch, it wasn't happy about crawling forward. Which again, I don't really mind this, just as a section that's going to be crazy mad ice and all the rest of it, they give you winch points. The view looks pretty cool, crunching and climbing through the ice, so... I can live with it. That kind of feels pretty natural there. Right now, I think, yeah, I need to turn left. I was completely not paying attention at all, and then I was like, hang on a minute. <laughs> oh, shit. I need to turn left. Normally, it'd be with a semi trailer. Nothing. Tis but a flesh wound. With this trailer, it's like, oh, goddamn, sons of bitches, I've got to re reverse half a truck length. This could end everything. Somehow, it didn't jackknife. I kind of played it at its own game. Made it think it was going to jackknife me one way and then steered into it. But yeah, thankfully I didn't go too far because otherwise that honestly could have even been a, a lazy quit and reload there. Or well, probably not. But still, this trailer is horrific at reversing. To be fair, there is quite a lot of roads on this map. Apart from these little patches and that of ice, but I suppose you do get away with uh, quite a bit of road if you go this way. So you can see there to the right of the screen there's a generator, there's a uh, dolphin and loaf. I think dolphin made it there with like six litres of fuel to spare. I've got the loaf with me though, so obviously it could top myself up if I needed to. Right, so for this one, uh, I'm going to drop the cement off. I don't want to drop the cement off when the loaf's sat on the roof, just to be safe. Seem to have sped the menu up, or that particular menu anyway. Could drop everything off pretty quick. This is a bit of a tedious pain in the ass. I've got the generator in that square, but you keep like that's the basic reason why I've had to leave this dolphin here. It's just so I can go and turn the generator on. And yeah, it's just a bit of a pain in the ass because, like I said, you now it's not a generator trailer you need there. You need a vehicle as well. Um, to be honest, I don't know. If the choice was mine, I'd just edit that out of the game and just say, once you've got a generator trailer in that yellow square, you're done. It counts. Um, yeah, so go through the menu, kind of how it works. Two lots of cement to build one uh, slab. Make three of them. And then we're good to go. Well, at this point again, before I even start having loaf withdrawals. I kind of messed it up when I drove onto the trailer earlier, so I wanted a little bit of a redemption going on. See, turn in circle of a goddamn housefly. What you want to do, you see, you clip your bumper, but if you just roll back a little bit and give it some throttle, he kind of does a wheelie, and it's just enough to jump up, and then he climbs up. Sorry, you know, it's like a, some motorbike going past in the background. The job's a good one. Impact, and we're good to go. Last little uh, step of the mission. Overall, I have to say, I thought this mission might end up taking me a little bit longer. So uh, it went alright in the end. Well, I suppose I did cut that generator bit out. But that wasn't really like a difficult part of the mission at all. It was, uh, well, like I said, pretty much the same journey I just did with this. Only towing a generator trailer behind it seems to flop around, doesn't really seem to weigh a lot, so... Yeah, like I said, pretty uneventful. Not really worth leaving the footage in. And even though I've got the loaf with me, the reason I was particularly keen on bringing the loaf at the minute is I know as I'm driving up ahead there's a big fat patch of ice to get through and uh, my fuel. I'd like to try if I can, just for principles. Trying to make the journey on my own fuel, but yeah, I'm not 
I'm not getting nine tenths of the way there. <laughs> They'll be like, God damn it, I ran out of fuel. I'm gonna have to go and get a vehicle from like back to the lowlands map or something. Oh, there's a big meaty truck driving past my house now. Not bad. Looks a bit like a dolphin actually. Yeah, this section can be a bit of a troll as well, and as you can see, there's a quite a lot of distance between the lamp posts, and uh, yeah, it's not not going to let you get it easy. Basically, what I did in the end was the same trick with doing a winch to the back of the flatbed to that lamp post. Then got, that got me forward a bit. Then do, did a winch from the side of the Tager to the lamp post just to kind of pull me over to the left because I was kind of stuck on a bit of ice. And as I got over to the left, you can see where it changes from ice to water. You just kind of get like that hard edge running along it and there's enough at least to just panic, steer left and right. I know at least I'm near enough to that uh, telegraph pole or whatever now to drag my way out there if I need to. So again, I'm pretty sure it is the, uh, the right flatbed behind me that just keep, it sort of gets hooked on a chunk of ice. So up to that point it wasn't going too bad, once I was leaning like that I kind of knew. But again, same trick, kind of winch on the back of the uh, ramped flatbed to the lamp post, telegraph pole, whatever it is. It's like a two in one. Do I really? <laughs> the last little bit. You see how gutless the winch is as well, there's still technically room for it to retract the winch and push me forward, but when you get like the last, I don't know, six or ten foot of winch, it's just useless. Uh, yeah, thankfully I could reach that thing, that lampograph pole. And we're away. So, uh, funny enough, fuel just turned uh, red on the screen. Yeah, that's what I knew would uh, nail the fuel a bit. Which, like I say, part of it, I think, is why they put certain sections like that in, like those uh, water sections I was crossing as well earlier. It's literally just squeeze the throttle and wait for you to get to the other side, but the amount of fuel it costs you for lack of distance, really, is kind of that's where I think they like to do it to force certain journeys it's going to cost you more than a truck's worth of fuel but again they didn't plan for taking a goddamn horse with me like a little backpack but yeah we made it made it with a bit of fuel to spare drop that off thankfully didn't hit the button again just because most of the time it doesn't happen but i didn't want to risk delivering the cargo when the loaf's packed on top of the cargo because uh, i think in the past yeah it has made cargo uh, vanish and then yeah, clicked it, it kind of already built the metal bits, but it showed you laying the road. It's kind of a half animation. And uh, yeah, there's the club that I did the first bit with, and that's, like I say, that's that done. At least now, I can kinda, I'm quite easily connected from both sides of the map, so I don't need to drive through all that ice if I want to get to this side. But yeah, that's about it for today though, I hope you enjoyed, I hope that helps. Thanks for watching, thanks for our Patreon members, get yourself a loaf, and I'll be back soon.